This is the review you've been all hyper for, and yeah, that's the name of the company, Hyper, but a lot of people have been really worked up in the comment section about this bad boy. Why? This is actually the first custom controller company to offer magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules that are anti-stick drift. So while you can enjoy those pro controller features, such as remappable back buttons, I would still opt for four rear buttons in their builder, mechanical instant triggers, a tactile mechanical switch, and swappable thumbstick caps, what they've got in this joint, while still giving stick drift the cold shoulder like we've been doing on the Ghoulie Kit and Game Sir G7, which aren't really comparable to this gamepad, not only in price point, but also feature set. This controller performed identically to potentiometer thumbstick modules. It was indistinguishable, not only in gameplay, but also in aim trainers on the PC, where I'm really eyes on the monitor, paying attention to what these modules are doing. Furthermore, in this video, we are gonna look at the flex rear paddle system, which I'm not as big of a fan of as the rear button offering, but can still be bound very quickly on the fly. Without further ado, this is a custom from Hyper, I'm AK40 Kevin, the controller captain, and this is the Gamer Heaven. And this is the most comprehensive, in-depth review of this gamepad on YouTube, which is timestamped into chapters reflected in the description and the timeline of the video, but don't you dare jump around. Hang out with me and learn everything there is to know about this gamepad. Let's get it. Touchpad. Yup. Yeah. Interchangeable. Yup. Bam. <laughs> This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywhopping the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this gamepad was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. As for the pack chain included accessories on the Hyper, I don't know if I'm Hyper, but I am pretty excited. The box is identical to the two previous Hyper controllers I have reviewed, one for PS5 and one for Xbox Series. It is going to be this burnt orange, eerily similar to Scuff's theme color. You will have this little fabric pull tab, which you'll pull up on, and this magnetized clasp will lift up. You can actually see the magnets in there. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but who really gives a shit? Welcome to performance. You've been greeted, and you're ready for what's down here. Your controller is held in place with this nice laser cut foam, which does have a cutout on top for your finger. One thing to notice, you're not going to have an included USB-C cable, although all custom controller companies have kind of done away with throwing in a free USB-C cable, and they're now either an 8, 10, you shouldn't be paying any more than 12 bucks for a USB-C cable. But they're all charging for a USB-C cable now, assuming that you have one. I'm pretty sure you do. But a big stinky con is that you don't have an instruction manual, pamphlet, or brochure, not even a little placard telling you how to rebind those rear buttons, so you have to Google it. Luckily, it is very easy to dig up online. A simple internet search, the first result, how to rebind these paddles but you don't need to go that route because you have this review and I'm going to show you step by step. But this is something I pointed out on my previous hyper reviews and it has not been remedied yet. There is still no physical instruction manual, nor is there a QR code to scan to get to a software manual so that, that you're just kind of confused about what to do with this gamepad. I'm not. I know what to do with it. Use it as a weapon to mollywop the noobs back to the lobby. but in case you're confused, uh, a breakout would be sick. There is nothing underneath this foam, although I would recommend holding onto this box since you don't have a carrying case. And if you're gonna get any kind of control freaks for this or a USB-C cable, it's just kind of nice to have a box to put all your loose bits. As for the cosmetics or appearance, whenever you spec out a custom controller in an online builder, you're not really sure how it's gonna show up to your doorstep, if the colors are gonna be what you pictured and if things are gonna look good or if they're just gonna clash kind of weird. I say this a lot about some of the controllers on the wall, but this has to be one of the most gorgeous controllers I've ever laid my corneas on. Now I have named this build the Ronin. I had a vision of what I wanted it to look like and I followed that to a T and I've got to give Hyper some credit. I don't think I've ever seen components, parts, color match this perfectly. This chin or trim piece, the back shell, the face buttons, the D-pad, the thumbsticks, everything is the exact same gray and it looks amazing. Then you get to this face plate which has a little bit of shine to it. It's not quite glossy but it is not matte either. It's kind of satin if you will. And the graphic, I just... <laughs> Now around backside, you are gonna notice that I did not take the four remappable button route. However, this does have the four remappable paddles, which we'll be talking about during the rear input section. But cosmetically, I think they look pretty good. You do have this kind of hexagonal pattern, which looks very similar to what AIM has been putting on their back paddles, triggers, and some of their other trim pieces. It would be nice if you could get different color options for these paddles, but the, the, they're, they're gonna be black for you. Cosmetics or appearance, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. This is stunning. As for the ergonomics or comfort, I know I just threw you for a loop, I'm usually facing 
in the back that way, camera over there, different camera angle, you're looking at the PC, but we're doing this instead. These flex paddles aren't uncomfortable by any means. However, they do stick a little bit further from the rear shell than they need to, which we'll talk about during the rear button section. And they're not really removable. You can remove them, but it's not toolless. You need a small Phillips head screwdriver, which is not included. So it's unclear if Hyper even wants you to remove these. And unlike the four rear button suite that they offer or the two rear button option as well, which are sunk pretty much flush with the palm grips, this sticks out a bit and does cut into comfort just a skosh. And there is no rubber grips. You can opt for them, but that does limit your selection of colorways. And since I wanted this Ronin build with gray across everything, I did go a little bit form over function. All show, no go, flash, no dash, except that doesn't really make sense because this looks good and can also do a lot of pro controller shit too. So I just sound like a moron, but this controller looks sick. Comfort wise, eh, it's about a six out of 10. As we're a hyper controller with buttons, it's about an eight out of 10. As for perceived build quality, this bad boy looks OEM, looks professional, and everything just feels nice and taut considering this controller has been fully disassembled and then customized, reassembled. It feels like a stock controller. It feels wonderful. These rear paddles are removable. You lift up on the center section. Okay, it just popped off and fell into the shadow realm. But then you also need a tiny Phillips head screwdriver, which I think is incredibly clumsy. I thought about bundling this in with the rear button section, but I'm gonna mention it here in build quality because this does feel incredibly secure. However, even if this was a toolless disassembly or removal of the rear paddles, like what we see with AIM, where you might need to get a pen inside that little release clip, but usually you don't even need that. Or the Elite Series 2, which has those metal magnetized rear paddles. I don't really believe these two Phillips head screws need to be here, but uh, you know, I could be I could be wildly incorrect. But every button's within spec and tolerances. I have no issues with the build quality. And if you do have a problem with your controller, there is a warranty in place, which we'll talk about right now. As for a warranty, Hyper has made a revision to their policy. You do still have that seven day replacement where if you have an issue, maybe you ordered one color and the component came a different color that you didn't order, you can replace it. You can get the gamepad that you wanted. But as far as the periodic term, you do have one year of warranty warranty coverage, which is awesome. That covers the bumpers, triggers, mechanical rear buttons, and now also covers stick drift, which is a huge W. One important note, your warranty will of course be voided if there's any evidence that your controller has been tampered with, but since it's already pimped out of its pajamas, all customized, you shouldn't have a need to take it apart to customize it. But in case you have a faulty part and you think, oh, I'm just going to take it apart and work on it myself. If you're within that one year spec of warranty, I would advise strongly against that and just hit up Hyper immediately. Then they also mentioned that they're pre-built, the signature, legacy, recon, and tournament. So not spec out a custom controller in the builder where you're picking individual parts, but if you buy one of the ready to ship units, they do still have the seven day replacement and the one year warranty. Also fine print down here that I like to see repairs and replacements will be done free of charge within the warranty period because a lot of these custom controller companies are charging you a restocking fee if you want to return your controller just because you don't like it and even charging the customer shipping to and fro to repair their controller when it's manufacturing defects, which I think is insane. So it's great that they break this out. Hey, we're going to cover it on our dime if it's our fault as well it should be. Oh, I spoke a little too soon. I just scrolled down here and read this next sentence. You are still responsible for that shipping buster, but any additional fees or charges that they might dig up out of the woodworks? Mm, no, sir. I can honestly say the D-pad or direction buttons and the face or action buttons are the only two components that I'm a little bit disappointed with on this hyper controller. And it's not because they don't look gorgeous. Cosmetically, they look slick as snot. There's a ton of options for tweaking the looks of them, which you're gonna see firsthand when we take a peek at the builder later. But as far as performance options, there really is none. It's abysmal. In comparison to companies like AIM, that offer their digital switches. So many companies call them digital switches, but basically they're mechanical switches like what you'd see in a gaming keyboard. Now, fully mechanical switches that have no rubber plunger mechanism underneath the front face generally have a tap life cycle for millions of clicks. For example, AIMS is 10 million. I think Razors is eight or 10. But moreover than all that, because this isn't a very high point of failure on controllers, it just feels better, at least in my personal opinion. IMO, you gotta caveat everything with that. A little period at the end of the sentence. But you're watching my channel, so you kind of stop by for my opinion. And I do like the feeling of mechanical switches. As long as they're quiet, sometimes they're a little bit loud, like razors joints. It shouldn't sound like a mechanical keyboard typing an angry email. They should be damn near silent. Damn, it's hot in this room, but I can't turn on the AC because it'll be picked up on the microphone, degrading the audio quality, and I simply cannot have that. I, I can sit here perspiring for a few more minutes. While this gentleman gnaws on my fingers, I want to explain to you and Hyper that the next thing I would like to see would be performance upgrades for the D-pad and the face reaction buttons. Because I've got to say, Hyper's been very aggressive. They've been on the push, introducing a lot of new features. For for example, being the first custom controller company to offer HE magnetic hall effect thumbsticks, and they're doing it at a very reasonable price. For example, I just reviewed a $460 DualSense controller from Modded Zone, and they're charging more than double what Hyper's willing to toss you these 
HE sticks for, which keep in mind, they're virtually stick drift proof for you. Shouldn't get stick drift in your lifetime. That's fantastic. But with the D-pad and face buttons, I'd like to see a mechanical option down the road, but there are a ton of cosmetic options in their builder and also they feel pretty good. They feel like stock PS5 controller buttons. I'm gonna give them a six out of 10 a pop. As for the accessory button suite, so that's gonna be pause, share, the touchpad, speaker grill, the hyper button, which has replaced the PS button, but does the same thing. The mic mute button, which by the way, if you didn't know, if you hold it down for a few seconds, it mutes all your game sounds. So not just your mic, but your whole PlayStation sounds. Pretty sick if you can't find the TV remote and the damn thing's blaring while the delivery driver's pounding at your door. A quick note, if you are trying to drop this Pro Controller into a charging cradle or dock, you are gonna have to remove these paddles for most of them, unless it's one of the versions like Ames, where it has a USB-C connector at the top, rather than dropping into this accessory port at the bottom, because these paddles won't make clearance. One really cool cosmetic note, there is a red LED that is underneath the speaker grill and comes on every time you power up the controller. And that's also gonna be the status light to let you know that you are in remapping mode when you're binding those rear buttons, which we'll do here momentarily. The touchpad feels secure. You can't really feel the hydro dipping graphics when you drag your fingertip across the front. Also, it doesn't have a weird swivel or pivot point. Well, no more loose than a stock controller. And praise the controller gods, pause and share haven't been all diddled up. For some reason, custom controller companies have a real hard time when it comes to reassembling controllers just with these two buttons here. They're always cockamamie in there or you have to press them at a weird angle or they're really squishy. I guess they're just overlooked a lot during reassembly, but no issues here with the hyper. Accessory button suite, six out of 10. Now as for these thumbsticks, they are magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules, which I'm sure you're very curious how they perform in gamepad tester, how they perform in gameplay. Did they feel any different when I'm diddling the sticks? I've been playing on controller for almost three decades, so I, I know what potentiometer thumbsticks feel like in gameplay on first person and third person shooters. So jumping to Hall Effect sticks, is there any issue or problem with that? We're gonna talk about that later on the PC, but what we need to talk about right now is the fact that I have Ooh. decreased thumbstick tension on the left. So it's very light, almost like there is no resistance. You can just move this thing effortlessly. And then on the right, which is gonna be for aiming, of course, I have the most aggressive resistance, the highest strength. There's two different increased thumbstick tensions, this one and that one. I went for that one. I will say you got to use yourself a control freak or some kind of thumbstick cap add-on with a little bit more height because it is an insane amount of resistance and you do really fatigue your thumb pretty quickly if you have the stock height because you don't have that extra leverage making it easier for you to move that stick. But let me just praise this configuration or setup for a minute. I love having that mental contrast of having a very easy to move effortless stick on the left and a very taut, gotta be intentional with my movements for those precise aiming on that right stick over there. That is why I generally only get increased thumbstick tension on the right, which is for aiming. However, if there's an option available for decreased tension, which I don't recall seeing until now, Battle Beaver might have that option. Yes, they do. I was curious myself, so I checked it out. They got decreased in light over here. But this is definitely the first company to offer it on Hall Effect thumbsticks. So not only are they the first custom controller company, boom, here's HE sticks in our builder for like $14 for each side. Very reasonable price. Keep in mind, they have to recalibrate those suckers. Little mo labor on their end. But damn, these perform hella good. Clicking down L3 and R3 feels quite quite secure. These thumbstick caps also very grippy. They're damn near flat, so they're not like the hybrids from PlayStation, which have a little bit of a dome, and then they have that lip or dish around the outside. Don't look at my pit stains, just look right here in my eyes and pretend I'm not sweating profusely like a fucking Yeti while I'm shooting this review. I've got six lights on me right now. It's actually four. I'm exaggerating, I'm, but you know, it feels like six. God damn it. <sighs> I still want to be here though. I'm having a great time. I'm pretty hyper about this review. So name of the controller. <laughs> So not only are they coming out of the gate swinging with HE thumbsticks at a reasonable price, which at first they got off to a little bit of a rough start. The first batch, the first two or three weeks, they didn't have the recalibration boards that they needed, so they had small issues. One was an audible noise, a little clickety mcclicky, which some potentiometer thumbsticks have when you're breaking neutral. As soon as you break neutral and get out of the dead zone and start to move the right analog stick just ever so slightly, you get like an audible click. It's really weird. But the bigger issues were a little bit of jitter at neutral, a little bit of noise, if you will. So it's sputtering around when you're not really touching the thumbsticks, which a lot of times you don't even notice in gameplay, especially on the console side of the house, because there's automatically dead zones baked into those games. Yes, you can go into the settings and taper back on your dead zone slider so they're more responsive for you. And you might notice that little jitter where your character's moving back and forth on you with that first batch. The other issue was a circularity issue. They weren't very circular in the circularity test. Furthermore than that, some of those circularity issues were kind of noticeable 
noticeable in gameplay from what I'm hearing on the streets. The controller paved roads. However, the current batch, what they've got in this joint, as we're going to see in Gamepad Tester, and also we're going to talk about the actual gameplay experience, is quite solid. Metal Gear Solid. If you haven't seen my Master Collection review, it is linked in the description below. It's a little bit of a cash grab, but not as offensive as the GTA Definitive Trilogy. At least you can play these without crazy bugs and glitches that weren't even in the original games. As for Control Freak Thumbstick Cap compatibility, we do have the Tyrannical Trio. We got the White Galaxies for PS4 and 5. We got the Red Infernos for Nintendo Switch. The Pro Controller, not the Joy-Cons. And then we have Black Omnis for the Xbox One and series. PlayStation's quite snug, although you can pinch and twist it, but in regular gameplay, you're not going to feel that. Switch Pro is even a little bit snugger, so I would pop for these. And the Xbox Ones, you have to really force them on. You feel like you might damage the stock caps, but you don't, and it shoves on very securely, so you can use any of the three on these. And the thumbstick option that I chose in the builder, not the modules, those are Hall Effect, but the actual caps is called Pro, which are pretty much flat, but very grippy and have this nice little line pattern around the outside. So the control free compatibility I just tested is for these thumbstick caps. But if you have the interchangeable swappable Johns, you don't even need to worry about control freaks. You just pop them off, pop them on. Over here in Gamepad Tester, and as you can see, these look like standard potentiometer thumbsticks. As I move them to and fro, and then I stop, they snap back to a default resting value of 0 0.00392, pretty consistently. <laughs> so what you're seeing on Axis 2 there, this is commonly referred to as noise, jitter, sputter. I like noise because that's basically what it is. When you're sitting at neutral here, it's jittering back and forth a little bit. I'm actually producing this movement with my finger right now. But prior to Hyper getting their recalibration boards, which I will say made this a new gamepad, they would constantly be like this. And even if you don't notice that in gameplay, if you do bump down your in-game dead zone sensitivity, you might actually see that movement and you just don't want that additional noise. It's not going to help your accuracy. It ain't going to do any favors for you. Luckily, that is not the issue with the current HE sticks from Hyper anymore. Love to see that. How about the circularity test? Because I love to see what's going to be produced there as well. So pretty much on par with potentiometer thumbstick modules, and you might be expecting to see a 0.0 in here or something like that. But no, these are very similar to what you're going to get from potentiometer thumbstick modules. And something that you really do need to keep in mind is that not all HE thumbstick modules are created equal. Overall, they're using the same materials. The connectivity of magnets being broken that is registering the movements of thumbsticks, but the quality bar is... There's no real standard with these HE thumbsticks. And if you don't recalibrate them with an additional recalibration board, a PCB that you solder on there, then your thumbsticks are straight up going to perform worse than potentiometer thumbsticks that you're used to. Yes, they have that feature of being virtually stick drift proof, unless that recentering spring goes out, but that is a very, very rare instance. But at that point, you're just getting thumbsticks for the durability factor, but they're going to give you less performance in gameplay. But as you can see here, that isn't the case. These are identical, maybe slightly better performance than we've seen with potentiometer thumbsticks, which generally have an average error rate of between 10 and 15. I see 12 a lot, and this was, this was lower, or not by much, but it was. And I will say in gameplay, these felt phenomenal. A little bit of a red, you're dead situation there, bottom left, but not noticeable at all in gameplay. I played with my dead zone slider all the way at zero, no issue whatsoever. And you can keep it there at zero because you know your controller is not going to drift over time. Give you a little bonus in this video. I grabbed two more Hall Effect thumbstick controllers off the wall. We've got the Ghoulie kit and we've got the GameSir G7SE. I don't even know why I had to look at it. I could see out of my peripherals. I know what's over here. Get to running and gunning. So this is with the Ghoulie kit. And as you can see, an even totter resting value of 0 0.00002. Let's test the circularity, shall we? <laughs> Yeah, so we are below that 1% range. We are at 0 0.5 with the Ghoulie Kit. And now we're wired with the Game Sir G7 SE, your special edition, the one that has those magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks. Let's test the circularity, shall we? Also, right around the same range as Ghoulie Kit. Let me explain why there's a big difference here. It's the easiest way to explain this. Controllers like the Ghoulie Kit and the Game Sir G7 SE are sourcing completely different thumbstick modules in comparison to Hyper, Modded Zone, and any of these custom controller companies, AIM, Battle Beaver, Hex, Cinch, Mega Mods, that are going to start releasing HE magnetic thumbstick modules. Now, if you personally, as a one man or woman army and one individual wanted to buy these thumbsticks, you can on Alibaba, AliExpress, and then drop them in, don't calibrate them and see what they'd be like, or calibrate them and see See what they be like a little bit better. They are still not going to perform as good as, say, for example, Ghoulie Kit, which is the first company to make this technology readily available in a controller. Yes, I talk about it all the time. The Dreamcast controller over my shoulder had magnetic hall effects. It wasn't really adopted. It wasn't made readily available in controllers. It does seem like the third party manufacturers that design their controllers in house and don't start with a stock Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo controller, disassemble it, customize it, reassemble it, ship it out to you. The ones that actually are their own shape and shell design 
design. They source all the parts and components individually and put them into their own body, if you will, seem to perform a lot better in my testing, which my testing, you might wonder, what the hell is that, Kevin? Off camera, I plug in one gamepad after another if they have Hall Effect sticks and I diddle with them and I look for discrepancies, things like jitter, things like issues in the circularity test. And I will say, thus far, Hyper is the only custom controller company that is offering HE thumbsticks at a reasonable price, like $13 per module, will not get you stick drift, and they perform identically in gameplay. I couldn't tell that I wasn't using just the normal potentiometer gamepad. This is the first custom gamepad that felt like that. Previously, I could have gotten that feeling with the Game Surge G7 or the Vader 3 Pro, which perform as good, if not a little bit better, as we saw in the circularity test. These hyper sticks, not bad by any means. They're, they're exactly what you're used to with potentiometer thumbsticks, but a little bit better and can't get you stick drift. Sick. I can put these down now. So just to summarize all of that hoopla, gamepads like this are going to have better HE thumbsticks than gamepads like this, at least for the foreseeable future, until HE thumbstick modules that you can get readily on Teemu and AliExpress catch up with Ghoulie Kit's patented technology. They patented the shit out of it because they were literally the first gamepad to, to be doing this, other than the Dreamcast joint, the first modern controller company to be doing this. In fact, that's what Ghoulie Kit is known for. They even make drop-in modules for the Steam Deck, and you just know those modules are going to be top tier, gold tier, because, well, the, the the company that made the technology, not made the technology, it's existed, like I said, you know, Dreamcast, but they made it readily available, were the first adopter of it, and seem to be implementing it the best. So bottom line, would I recommend these sticks? Well, honestly, it depends. They're actually pretty cheap, and maybe to put inside an old controller that you want to save it, especially a controller that goes through a lot of heavy use, and you're not looking for the most accuracy possible, they're actually pretty decent. They're not too bad. Just because something has the name Hall effect on it doesn't make it better. And that kind of brings up the subject, why haven't we been using Hall effect sensors all along in controllers? But Hyper has also done not just an admirable, but a very good job dropping HE sticks into a custom controller that has pro controller features. See, I didn't confuse anybody there. We're not confused. We all know everything now. As for the bumpers and triggers, this is another component or set of components, I should say, where there was a little bit of disappointment. Previously, the D-pad and action buttons left me a little bit flaccid, but now we're talking about this suite up here. For $15, you can get the quick switches, which will add mechanical switches to the bumpers and triggers. It's a shame that you can't separate that because I always advise skipping that feature on bumpers because they're already a short squeeze and then popping for them on the triggers if you're going to play competitive shooters, first or third person, pick your poison, because you get that one millimeter squeeze with an instant actuation with that mechanical switch. Also, just the sound they produce is very satisfying. <clears throat> Back to the lobby with you. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 straight to the lobby with you. My next complaint is you only have four colors available in the builder, five if you include the stock black switches, which I'm inclined not to. Then my third and final complaint, and the biggest one in my opinion, is that you have to pick and choose. Do you want those linear stock triggers so you can use this controller on racing games or those first party SIE titles that have little mini games where you need to squeeze these a certain amount? Or are you going to use this for first person shooters like COD and Apex where you want that mechanical switch? It's a shame that you have to pick and choose and you can't just use this gamepad for all of your games. You're buying a very expensive gamepad, you want to be able to use it on all platforms for all games, and you're simply not going to be able to, not with these kind of triggers. I personally prefer on-off trigger stops like we see with the DualSense Edge, which are actually three-way trigger stops, although when they're third stop, they actually don't cut off enough at the squeeze for my personal preference. That's where the AIM-V3 paddles take the cake for the best PS5 triggers on the market, as they are on-off switches, but you also get a tactile mechanical switch just like these hypers when you engage them. However, these are by no means bad, and I will give the bumper and trigger suite with these mechanical switches an 8 out of 10, as they are very nice, and I do believe $40 is a reasonable price to ask for mechanical bumpers and triggers, although I do wish that could be separated in the builder. For example, a $15 option for the bumpers, another $15 or $20 for the trigs, because then my audience can just opt for the triggers. Also, I'm not sure why I chose black for this build. Maybe because it goes with the black rear paddles. I don't know. It does look a little bland and boring, and I wish I would have gone with I remember now, they actually didn't have the color I wanted. I wanted this kind of gray to match the rump or tuchus of this controller, but they only have black, white, red, green, and blue, all of which would look silly on this gamepad. I'm a little sweaty and disheveled, not because I was watching cops, but because I burned a thousand calories on the elliptical like two minutes ago and then just ran right in here. Shower unnecessary, got a review to do. If you want my full unhinged and unlocked thoughts on the rear button options from Hyper, whether it's for Xbox or PlayStation, as they do have two and four rear button options and two different position options if you are going four rear buttons, one where you can 
cover all four of the buttons with just your middle fingers, this ain't that variant, and one a little bit more spaced out where you're going to use your ring fingers for the bottom buttons and your middle fingers for the top buttons. My fingers. Having gotten extensive stick time with Hyper's rear buttons as well as these flex paddles, this is a first for me, this is a new taste, I would still opt for four rear buttons in their builder as both of the placement options are great. Now these flex paddles are cool and they're removable, but it's not toolless disassembly. You need to lift up on this little plastic panel, which always falls on the floor for me. I have yet to just pop it off and have it be in my hand. Very slippery, very small. Then you also have two small Phillips head screws in here, which I think is a stupid design because it's not toolless removal. It's almost like these actually aren't meant to be removed and Hyper just wants you to leave these on, which is kind of weird because other paddle controllers like the Elite Series 2 or the AIM V3 allow you to toolessly very quickly remove one, two, three, all of the paddles, depending on your needs. But these flex paddles are in a good ergonomic position where you want to naturally grip a DualSense controller. You do have your middle fingers on these top buttons and your ring fingers on these bottom paddles. They're all paddles. I know I said these are buttons, these are paddles. It's all boat oars, it's all paddles. The next piece of praise I have for these rear paddles, it is quick and easy to rebind them on the fly, although there is no instruction manual, QR code, or anything to guide you. You basically have to Google, how do I bind my hyper rear buttons? First result you're gonna see is gonna guide you through the process or you can watch what I'm about to do. I was just jaw jacking and lip smacking for like six minutes. I showed you how to rebind the buttons, gave you my pros and cons of these bad boys and the damn camera wasn't even rolling. Fuck my life. Start with the pros, cause there is a few of them. First of all, I will say I do absolutely prefer the rear buttons from Hyper over the rear paddles as they share pretty much the same pros, but their specific cons, limitations or areas of improvement with the paddles over here. One thing I love about both the Hyper variants is you can remap or bind the rear inputs on the fly. Love to see that. You don't need an application and it is a pretty quick and easy process. You do need to be powered on and paired to either your console or your PC and you're gonna hold down on the D-pad as well as cross for 10 seconds. And in that speaker grill, you are gonna get a red light right there by the hyper button or the home button if you shall. And yes, we shall remap these rear buttons. That light's gonna go solid for you. Then you're gonna press and hold the combination of the face button or D-pad that you would like bound to whichever paddle. So I would like cross dedicated to this paddle right here. I'm gonna hold down for a few seconds. You're gonna get a flash of that red LED. Then it's gonna go right back to solid as it does stay in remapping mode, which I really like. You can rattle off the rest of the three bindings and then to exit remapping mode, oh, the controller just powered itself off, but all you need to do is press down on the D-pad and it gets you out of mappable mode and into playable mode. The longest part of the procedure is just holding down and cross for 10 seconds, but once you're in mapping mode, it stays there and you just need to press down, not hold it to get out of mapping mode. That's great. Next pro is that these are in a good ergonomic position where you wanna naturally wrap your hands around the palm grips of this dual sense. Your middle fingers are on these top paddles and your ring fingers are on these bottom two. Keep in mind, if you do wanna be able to cover four rear inputs with just your middle fingers, you have to go the button route. I also do like the stippling or texture. It's very reminiscent as to what AIM is using, that hexagonal pattern, but just slightly different to not step on their toes. It does provide a nice grip while being kind of smooth and satiny on your fingers. I, I like it a lot. The next con, these do feel a little bit cheap. You can lift them up and uh, it's not very confidence inducing. I understand they'd have to use a very thick, durable, dense PCB, PBC, whatever the acronym is, plastic to make this not happen, but Jesus. And the biggest problem here at a glance is that these rear paddles sit further from the rear shell than they need to. All controller manufacturers watching this video, try and get your rear buttons or inputs as close to this rear shell as possible. That is great for ergonomics. And that makes it to where newcomers to rear buttons or back paddles don't immediately get offended when they grab one of these pro controllers and then go back to using the face buttons and D-pad. The whole purpose of having those rear inputs so you can keep your fingers on the thumbsticks walking and aiming like the stallions and stallionettes do. They're the ones bucking you back to the lobby. These are also very loud, very similar to the AIM B3 rear paddles, which isn't a huge deal if you have a headset on or you're blaring your surround sound, but when your significant other's passed out next to you and they've got this going off next to them. Probably won't be a big deal if they're snoring like a grizzly, but if they're a light sleeper, you're getting slapped around. Now, what's really interesting here is I do believe Hyper's rear buttons and rear paddles are about the same volume decibel wise. Yes, I know I could be a professional and do a test with my phone application. Hey, this is the noise floor of my room. Here's the rear buttons. Here's the rear paddles. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hold them up to my ears and do a couple of clicks into my auditory cavities, which are fine tuned. Yeah, it's about the same volume, almost identical, except it's more of a low frequency, a deep rumble, if you will, on the buttons, and then more of a high frequency, hollow and tinny with the paddles. And I do prefer the sound of the buttons. They seem quieter, even though they're really not, just because of the sound it produces. <laughs> After using the flex paddles, I'm gonna give them a six out of 10, the overall package. But as for the rear inputs, if you go with the button option, I don't know what the hell I gave this bad boy in my initial impressions review, but I've got a lot more stick time with it. And it's feeling about an 8.5 out of 10 for me, an 8.5 out of 10. <sighs> 
I'm gonna give it a nine, actually. Just, it deserves that extra half point. These are, ooh, they are a little loud, though. No, that, that, that's why the 8.5 exists. That's why those half points exist. They're fucking loud. Hmm, another little cosmetic note. You can get different colored rear buttons, but you cannot change the color of the paddles in the builder. And another con or downside for going the flex paddle route. If you're gonna build a hyper controller, I personally recommend going the four rear button route. Unless you want two inputs, then they have a two rear button version. This has identical battery life to a stock DualSense controller, which I have an entire video going over how you can kind of eke out a little bit more battery life by turning off things like the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback and muting the onboard microphone, which is listening constantly. But this is another weird little wives tale that I've heard before and I want to just debunk it as well. There is no battery difference in one of these custom controllers because they start life as a stock Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo controller, get disassembled and customized from there from one of these companies. So the battery on board is a stalker. They're not increasing it or decreasing it. It's still a 1560 milliamp hour on this bad boy. And you still have the same features in there that are going to drain the battery, haptic feedback, adaptive trigger motors, which have been disabled. So that might squeak out a little bit more battery life. It really isn't that noticeable. It performs just like a normal gamepad battery life wise. Getting our stock input lag or delay and X input test is going to be a little bit of a chore because it's a PlayStation controller. Not really a chore. You just need to launch DS4. Just going to spoof the PC into thinking this is an Xbox 360 controller. There's an update. I'm going to do it. Run with admin rights. Okay. Right click properties. I'm going to leave this in the video so you know how to do this too. Go to compatibility. Tick run this program as an administrator. Apply. Okay. Now I should be able to do that update. Awesome. Controller is recognized. That dual sense, 100% battery life. You can change the color of your LED lighting around the touchpad, of course, but that's not what we're here for. Click on edit for a sec. Come over here to other. Emulated controller. 360. Good. It's doing what it ought to. Minimize it, but don't close it. Launch X input again. Boom. Yep. We got a 360 controller plugged in. Psych. Four milliseconds of input lag or delay on a stock clock, 250 hertz style. As we well and damn well sure know, these are no slouches on PC. The DualShock for PlayStation 4, the DualSense for PlayStation 5, great PC controllers because they're lickety split speeds. And they can be overclocked, which we're about to do right now. So with an over, under, sideways, and across clock, or what you might call an overclock, we were able to get under one millisecond of input lag or delay on a thousand hertz overclocked polling rate. You might be wondering, Kevin, why don't you push to 8,000? Because I generally only see a 0.01 millisecond increase between between the two options. On 1000, I'm generally around 0.93 milliseconds. And then at 8000, I'm at about 0.91. So I guess that's two milliseconds difference. And while I personally haven't experienced any connectivity issues with 8000 Hertz, I have heard that pushing it to 8000 does cause a lot of controllers to act a little bit janky. And since I've heard that 0.01 millisecond, you're going to lose that in your gaming loop anyway, between your controller to your monitor, then back to your eyes and then to your graphics card or to your console. All the devices are inputs that accrue input lag or delay, you're not going to notice 0.01 by going from 1,000 to 8,000. That's just my uh, answer because I've gotten that question a lot in the comment section. Hey, Kevin, do you have the latest Lord of Mice? Why don't you go to 8,000? I do and I don't because there's there's no re need for it, at least in my personal experience, which could be different from yours. As for converter support, ignore all the blankets. I have a dog. With the XB2, you can pair via Bluetooth to play on Xbox Series. And with the NS adapter, you can play on Switch. Those are linked in the description below. I don't remember Hyper's website having blackboard borders on the side where it can't fill out the screen. I'm on a standard monitor, not an ultra wide or anything. This is just a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And there's these weird borders. Anyway, website itself is actually pretty sexy, cleanly laid out, nice high quality pictures. And most importantly, easy to navigate. You have the shop tab over here, which is going to break out different platforms. And you can also get Hall Effect thumbsticks on a PlayStation 4 controller as well. So if you're still on PS4 or you just prefer the DualShocks layout and you play it on PC, then yeah, here you go. And then in the shop tab, if you click on Hall Effect controllers, it is going to take you to some pre-assembled ready to ship joints. My biggest problem with these is a lot of them don't have a remap chip, so it's going to be static buttons. And also you're not able to pick and choose. Do I want rubber grips? Do I want a colored face buttons? Do I want two buttons close to each other? Do I want them more spaced out so I can involve my ring fingers? You don't really get to pick and choose. I mean, this one actually looks pretty sick. Like it has everything you need, 200 bones. And that is something that I need to mention. If you are on a budget, which if you're on a heavy budget, you're probably not looking at a custom controller from a company like this. But if you don't want to spend an arm, leg and a kidney, just the arm and the leg, come over here to signature and this is going to be a sub $200 uh, powerhouse as they call it but it has all of the pro controller features for remappable rear buttons clicky triggers etc for under 200 bucks but we're going to go to the builder and spend a little time to get there whether you're on xbox or playstation you are going to go to design your own first thing we're going to do is spec out a performance only build so no cosmetic or appearance upgrades just the stuff to get you kills 120 bucks 
for a stalker over here. It literally looks like all that was really changed is the face buttons, D-pad, and the hyper button. 120 bones. Imagine that. So as far as rear performance, that is either going to be your mechanical buttons, which you can choose two or four, and there is two different positions. Middle fingers covering all the buttons or using your ring fingers to hit the bottom two, which is what I have on my matcha green hyper controller, and I love this layout. But the controller we're testing here today does have the Flex Pro paddles, which are $25 and an additional $15 for a remap chip, which I do strongly recommend you pop for, because if you change games or sharing the controller with somebody, you don't want to have those static buttons that are what you picked in the builder six months ago. No price difference in the positioning of the four rear buttons, and awkwardly enough, there's actually no price difference going two or four, so why the shit mathematically would you have less for the same price, unless you just prefer a two-button layout, in which case I have to uh, bring to your attention there's four face or action buttons, four reasons you shouldn't take your fingers off the thumbsticks, just my personal opinion. And it's 20 bucks for the mechanical buttons, plus an additional 15 for the remap chip, so 35 bucks out the door. As where it's $40 for the paddles, which I actually liked not as much as the buttons. So we got four remappable buttons with a remap chip, then we also add these quick bumpers and triggers. We're going to leave off the HE thumbsticks for this build. We're going to skip over increased or decreased thumbstick tension. This is a performance-only budget build, if you will. And then I'm going to choose interchangeable thumbstick cap. It's going to save you a little bit of money on control freaks or whatever interchangeables you usually get, and you're going to be able to change up the height. Keep in mind, they are going to have the same shape. They're going to be the hybrids that PlayStation uses, but swappable thumbstick caps is pretty much a pro controller staple or feature you expect. The three being remappable rear buttons, swappable thumbstick caps, and instantaneous triggers. Clicky clicky bits. Six, we got our performance only build, $189.95, which is pretty much the signature series, except they usually have prettier faceplates on them. If you're just going for a performance only build from Hyper, I actually recommend just going for one of their pre-built signatures over here. They don't have as many cosmetic options, but they don't look ugly either. This carbon fiber one looks cool. Shit, this lime green one ain't bad. This little blue joint, decent too. Something to keep in mind if you leave the builder for whatever reason, reason to browse their website and then come back to the builder. It does not save any of your changes. It refreshes to a stock controller. So make sure you leave the tab with the builder open. We spec that a performance only build, but let's crank the knob to 11 and add every single feature we can and see how large this number can become. How offensive to our wallets. Four rear buttons, change the color of them, gotta remap them. Yup, I want that. Yes, I want hall effects. Would you silly or something? Decreased on the left, increased on the right because of the same price. Designer faceplate, you already know. Yeah, that'll work. A little Damascus in there. They don't have too many designer faceplates, but if you click on colors, they do have quite a bit more flat and gradient colors. Still not nearly as much as other builders, though. The trim is going to be this chin, make her gray. Home button, hell yeah, four bucks to change the color of it. Why not? Touchpad, yup. Yeah. Interchangeable. Yup. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. Little cosmetic con, you do have the standard stalker buttons, then you have crystal and matte, but none of these have the actual lettering, or not lettering, those are Xbox buttons, but symbols for PlayStation buttons. It doesn't have the actual symbols or shapes on there, which I kind of like those buttons that are colored, but still have the shapes. They look a little bit more OEM factory. Same thing with the D-pad. They're all one solid color instead of having the little arrow lines, which I think looks better, and other builders from other companies do offer. Let's keep cranking on the options, increasing the price. For the rear shell, you do have these matte colors, although only three of them. And then you have the sport grip, which I do strongly recommend popping for, which is going to be this anti-sweat grip. Feels very nice in the hands. Only 18 bucks too. And then this is just silly to me. Why would you pay to remove a feature of a stock controller, especially if you're using this to play first party Sony interactive entertainment games, which make full use of that incredibly immersive and strong haptic vibration. But we have to because it's going to add to the build cost and we're trying to make this stupid expensive for science. Now, this is great to see. They don't have any warranty tiers or paid options. It is just a one year standardized warranty, which does does include stick drift. Love to see that. And you do have seven day free replacement. So if you got a different colored face button that you ordered, hit them up immediately and get a replacement. And then for $20, you can request express bill. Just because you express it does not mean it will get approved. You're going to get an email within two days from the admin explaining if that's feasible for them. If they're backlogged with orders, they're not going to be able to honor this. And that is something that I need to roll right into. And that is going to be the wait time with these controllers. But first, let's take a look at the yeah 33180. That's actually much cheaper than other builders. I can easily get into the mid fours with other companies. So if you want a fully loaded John, that's a little bit less offensive. It looks silly because I slapped on random objects, mixed matched and stinky, but you could make a prettier controller. But now we need to touch on wait time, which is something I always talk about with these custom controller companies where they have a builder, because when you're creating a custom controller online, they need to do just that, build it. They disassemble a stock controller, take the pieces and parts you selected, put it together, test it to make sure all the buttons aren't fucked up and then send it to you. So because of that, if you want a controller quickly in your hand from Hyper, I would recommend going with one of the pre-built, the signature series. But with those, you will 
will not be able to select those HE thumbstick modules, those anti-stick drift modules that's only in the builder as of current. But down the road, Hyper might implement that in some of their pre-builds, maybe a higher tier pre-build, more expensive one. The current lead time, according to Hyper, is five to six weeks as they have hired four additional members since they started offering the whole effect sticks in their builder, and that's great. However, there's two members of my community, one in the Discord and then one that floats around the comment section of all my controller reviews that have both been waiting on custom Hyper controllers for over two months. And while it seems like their orders were placed, well, indeed, like two months ago, and now Hyper has hired additional staff, got more hands on the assembly line, so to speak, and is catching up to their target of five to six weeks for build time. But with all these custom controller companies, it really does fluctuate. I've seen companies go as low as a week getting a controller built and shipped out. And then I always share the experience of my Battle Beaver, where it took two and a half months with zero communication from the company, other than an email to let me know that the triggers I selected in the builder were no longer available because they had waited a while to start my build. And that's not an uncommon experience in the controller community by any means, unfortunately. We'll start with the con shortcomings, limitations, areas of improvement, because I think there are less of them. I'd like to see the bumper and trigger option for mechanical switches separated. Bumpers, 15, 20 bucks, triggers the same. However, if they're using the kit that comes linked, it's it's, it's all one piece, then that's not going to be possible. But it'd be cool considering I usually skimp out on the bumpers because the stock squeeze is already like one millimeter and they're not a big point of failure. And then just spend that money on the trigs. Along those lines, I would also like more than five colors for the bumpers and triggers in the builder, please. These Flex Pro paddles aren't bad by any means, but my preferred rear input system from Hyper is going to be their four rear buttons with the spaced out layout where you use your ring fingers as well. These Hall Effect thumbsticks look good, smell good, taste good, perform good, but a uh, little limitation or con here. If they could look a little bit better in the circularity test, that would be fantastic because there are other Hall Effect gamepads such as the Ghoulie Kit and the Game Surge G7, which are below 1%. And it didn't seem like it was because of a baked in outer dead zone or anything that was causing it from reaching the outside of the bottom left. It is just that they could be calibrated a little bit better. But as they stand, they're better than most potentiometer thumbsticks. Most gamepads you'd pick up an Elite Series 2, a DualSense Edge that have potentiometer modules. This is going to feel the same in gameplay. The next con is the fact there's no instruction manual, no QR code to scan, or no little placard or card to get up and running with how to bind the rear buttons. You have to Google it as of now. And that's been an ongoing thing on my last two hyper controllers and still hasn't been remedied, but one day. The biggest con here is going to be that wait time, which is going to get better over time. But since this is the first custom controller company doing the HE thumbsticks, they're a little backed up. As of now, that will go down to about four to five weeks. I think that's all I got in the cons department. Moving on to the pros, cosmetically, this controller looks gorgeous. It turned out exactly like it looked in the builder, which is fantastic. I will say all the grays are color matched, which you don't really see on a lot of builders. Sometimes the face buttons don't match the D-pad. That doesn't match the thumbsticks, which doesn't match the trim. And the back shell doesn't match anything. All of Hyper's rear inputs are actually pretty good. Even the flex paddles, which I'm not a huge fan of, aren't bad. And their two four rear button options are great. Also love the fact that you can remap them on the fly very quickly. Mechanical bumpers and triggers do feel fantastic, although I wish they were just a little bit cheaper than $40, or there was the option to have on-off trigger stops or locks instead of permanently mechanical switches that allow me to play racing games or other games that don't need trigger stops. The biggest pro here is hands down going to be the fact that they are the first custom controller company doing these HE thumbsticks, and they're doing it right. It's a very acceptable asking price. It's separated from the left and right thumbsticks, so if you only wanted a one or the other, you can get them, and they're also calibrated correctly. They're calibrated well. They perform good in the gamepad tester. And more importantly than that, they perform good in gameplay. I couldn't even tell that I wasn't using a normal potentiometer gamepad, which is sick because the modded zone controller I just reviewed in gameplay felt normal. But then I tried a couple of aim trainers on the PC where you're really paying attention to how those thumbsticks are moving. And I could tell a little bit of a difference that I wasn't playing with a normal gamepad, if you will. This was virtually indistinguishable from a normal potentiometer gamepad. High five. Hyper is linked in the description below alongside an exclusive discount for my audience. And I'll see you stallions and stallionettes. Oh, hold on. Comment section. You all know what to do down there. Tear it up. Start a little controller conversation down there. I'll hop in there to drop my two cents or buffalo nickels, if you will. And I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in the system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the 
stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.